Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Q2 2024 quarterly report behind the data webinar. The goal of these webinars is to dive deeper into the data we present to you in each quarterly report and give more context into the why and the what does this mean around all of the various data points gathered throughout this report. The theme in Q2 was downtown together. Downtown experienced a lot in the second quarter, from warmer weather to parades to a derecho show causing significant damage. The point is, whether it was to celebrate or to clean up, the downtown community came together. In this, we analyze the health of downtown as it relates to everyday activity, major events and hospitality, the business environment, and the residential population. We want to know everything from what is happening in Trebley Park on a Wednesday afternoon, to the major sporting events and concerts on a Saturday night, to the new development under construction downtown. As we continue to see this major shift in what downtown has to offer, it's important to be able to provide information and context around why this is happening and what it means for the future. So let's get right into it. Starting off with the downtown polls, this section dives into what was happening downtown on an average day. The main takeaway for this quarter was visits increased and people stayed longer. In Q2, downtown saw nearly 10 million visits from 3.8 million visitors, each seeing a 12% increase from the previous quarter. Visitors were also staying 10% longer in Q2 compared to Q1, with a median length of stay at just over two and a half hours. This increase in visitation translated to our downtown parks as well, with a 13% increase in park visits and a 15% increase in visit frequency from the first quarter. Our spring programming events brought over 7,000 individuals to Market Square Park and Trebley Park for different activities, including the farmer's market, bingo, trivia, movie nights, fitness classes, and more. Visitors actually now make up a majority of the total daily population downtown on both weekdays and weekends. These points overall show a continued shift in the purpose of downtown activity. We're seeing an increase in individuals coming downtown for leisure and entertainment compared to just coming into the office to work. So this next section is only in downtown, which shifts the focus to the major events and drivers of activity in the quarter. What we saw in Q2 was big events downtown meant big nights for Main Street. Large events, including Astros games, concerts, parades, and conventions led to an outsized impact on downtown visitation. This chart here shows average daily changes in visitation from the baseline average. The solid blue line is for all of downtown, and the green dashed line measures Main Street visitation. On May 4th, we saw the Astros host the Mariners, the Dynamo host St. Louis, and a regional volleyball tournament taking place at George R. Brown. This day saw nearly an 80% increase in visitation compared to the average day downtown in Q2. And on that same day, Main Street saw a 77% increase in average daily visitation. So this just goes to show that there is a significant spillover effect to Main Street from big events that are happening all the way on the other side of downtown. Another major takeaway from the quarter was Downtown destinations and our NRG connection filled our hotels and support more hotel development. So how do these major events affect hotel demand? We saw a pretty significant decline in hotel performance in April 2024 compared to April 2023. And this was due to a couple of reasons, including the NCAA Men's Final Four taking place last year, along with Taylor Swift selling out three consecutive shows at NRG Stadium. However, we saw a bounce back in the last two months of Q2, leading to occupancy and rev par seeing slight increases overall in Q2 2024 compared to the same period last year. And overall, de overall demand increased by seven points compared to last year, which is good news for our hotel pipeline. With nearly 500 rooms under construction currently, along with another approximately 300 units proposed with the new Astros mixed use development, the market continues to show the ability to increase demand and fill hotels. So let's discuss the ever so popular topic of return to office. Despite the derecho, employee activity continued to climb. Our return to office rate at the end of Q2 was 68% compared to the same period in 2019. Despite the derecho tearing through downtown, leaving extensive damage, our employee activity was still 0.7% higher than it was in the previous quarter. 
This just goes to show the resiliency of downtown stakeholders to clean up, start repairs, and get back to work. And we can additionally see the recovery rate of visitors and residents at 79% and 140% respectively compared to the 2019 period. Our downtown light rail stations have also been working to get back to pre-COVID activity. Overall downtown light rail stops are about 70% recovered in Q2 2024 compared to Q2 2019. And while the central station and entertainment district stops are slightly higher at 81% and 85%, all downtown stops are continuing to see increases from the previous quarter and year. With plans for Metro to integrate different tap to pay and credit card options, we could expect to see a continued increase in ridership as it becomes more convenient and efficient for anyone to utilize the light rail without the need of a specific cue card. And now on to office conversions. As we continue to look into office conversions as a solution to increasing office vacancy and unused space, we want to put some of those numbers into context. According to CoStar in Q2, we had a total inventory of 53.8 million square feet, which was 25% vacant. If you take out the top 10 conversion candidates from our study, the vacancy drops over 5% down to just 19.8%. The top 10 candidates in this study represent 6.1 million square feet of space, which is 63% vacant. And one specific example of how a few buildings can largely impact vacancy is with 800 Bell, which is 1.3 million square feet counted as 100% vacant in our submarket. So this building alone accounts for 2.4% of our total inventory and nearly 10% of our total vacant space. We will talk about residential here after this, but converting some of our office stock into multifamily or other uses can both continue to expand our residential population, contributing to a thriving downtown that is no longer just a working destination, while also starting to solve some of the problems of an increasing office vacancy rate and stagnant rents. The most recent conversion delivery, Elevate, has seen success leasing units. From opening in November 2023 to the end of June, they were already 58% occupied, with only about 10% of that being pre-leasing activity. And that equates to roughly 22 leases signed per month since opening, proving that there is a demand for this type of space downtown. And last but not least, we have residential activity. Residential absorption is strong and our region's growth should keep this going. Continuing the discussion of residential demand, we moved to multifamily absorption, Downtown multifamily properties have seen a higher rate of absorption than surrounding submarket clusters within the loop, along with other submarkets, including the Galleria and the Woodlands. In Q2, downtown absorbed 237 units, representing a 3% absorption rate. Downtown also leads in year to date absorption and 2023 absorption at 5.4% and 7%, respectively. Successful absorption can encourage new retail, along with other amenities and services to support the community and enhance livability downtown. Since 2022, there have been six multifamily properties delivered, which total over 1,700 units. These six properties are already a combined 76% occupied. And if you take out the two properties that were delivered less than a year ago and still in lease up, the other four properties are a combined 87% occupied. So as Houston continues to see a growing residential population, downtown has shown success in supporting new residential development to house these individuals. I hope this presentation has given some more detailed insight into what was going on downtown in the second quarter and was able to provide more context into what that means and what to look for going forward. From celebrations to times of crisis, downtown was able to come together and come out stronger as a community than we previously were. And as downtown continues to shift into a vibrant, dynamic neighborhood supporting businesses, big events, and everyday leisure, there's a lot to look forward to in the future from Q3 onward. And if there are any questions or comments regarding data or this presentation, please feel free to reach out to our team and we'll do our best to answer those questions. I put my email down in the bottom of this slide for convenience and you can just send any thoughts over to that. Uh, thank you all for just taking the time to tune in today and we look forward to providing more insight into what Q3 brings us soon.
Thank you.